you know, my friends, I think we might be about to have an escapee tortoise here. In fact, <laughs> there we go. Oh my gosh, which tortoise is this? It's Thalia, the one who is currently pregnant at 73 years old. And she is currently wiggling her way as quickly as she can across the path of the brand new tortoise breeding facility, which I am pretty darn proud about. Uh, and hopefully, like, the tortoises won't make too grand an escape, or else I might have to figure out how to install some guest gates. But, how fun! I love that they can just climb over the rocks, and they can wander all around the place to see what's happening inside of their brand new facility. Oh, we need to turn this on so that it tells about the Galapagos giant tortoise as well. Oh, and we need, oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, Calope is currently exploring. Look at how, oh my gosh, this is, this is amazing. This is beautiful. She is literally climbing mountains. I am so proud of her. She must be inspired by the mountain range that we currently have expanding inside of Zudesia Zoo. <sighs> but all right, my friends, I hope that you have your raincoats ready for working in Zudesia Zoo today. And we're going to have another beautiful, hopefully peaceful, knock on the Kapoki wood, day wandering our zoo and taking care of all of the amazing creatures that call it home. Right now, nobody needs our immediate attention. So I can go ahead and give you guys the tour, the tour that I haven't been able to pull off yet of the Darwin breeding facility that we got from the Steam Workshop and have added in. And um, before we begin, there's been some earthquakes rocking the place lately. And it seems that the mountain range we put in last time has expanded. <laughs> Quite a bit. It has a couple new expansions. The mountain range that was just two mountains has now become four mountains, which we actually, oh, we should name these mountains. That would be so cool. That's totally on my list now. Oh my gosh. But we'll look at the mountain range when, mountain range when the rain eases up. And for now, let's put on our raincoats and dash in to see Timid. She's having another baby, you guys. Oh, look at that baby bongo playing in the rain back there. Oh, that was so cute. But Timid is actually giving birth again to what will probably be, I hope not, but probably will be her last calf because she is quite the old elder now. And as soon as we figure out if it's a boy or girl, we're going to name it after either Timid as Timid the second or after Reserved, her mate, as Reserve the second. All right, she wants to get away from all these other stripy butts. Maybe she's settling in to have her baby. <gasps> oh, oh. and she had so many amazing babies. I, I just, where's her, where's her baby reserved? I feel so reserved, there you are. I, I'm so sorry buddy, your mate is gone. You guys are a very independent species who is not very social anyway. He is also quite old at 24. I, Oh, my heart. <laughs> if I had a section to put him as a retired Okapi, I totally would move him to Okapi retirement right now. But I don't. So we're going to leave him there and then put in some of his children who will be able to have healthy babies uh, next. And Acorn, you just need to scooch. You'll be in the ideal temperature in a second. But damn it! She was going to have her baby. Gosh, oh man, well, you know, we do have a pregnant Okapi actually sitting in our animal storage right now. Unfortunately, I believe it's bashful, 
And I think that she's actually pregnant with her father's child, which was an accident. But we'll go ahead and add a bashful in. And then we'll name her child after Timid or her dad, uh, depending. And then we'll put her on contraceptives so she doesn't get pregnant for the duration of her father's life. And then we'll get her a new mate. But gosh, what a sad way in a way to start the day. I really loved Timid a lot. Do we have some sort of like Okapi? Mm, doesn't look like there's an Okapi design. Okapi? Okapi? Something I want to I want to be able to celebrate like Timid's life somehow. She was really important to me. Maybe we'll find something pretty. Let's see if we can find. You know what would be the best way to celebrate? A shy creature's life. Maybe putting down... We have memorial huts. Let's see. I actually feel like one of the best ways we could celebrate her life is like building a little private area for people. Maybe a spot where people could go ahead and like use the restroom and kind of hide out of the way. That actually sounds really good as a way of celebrating her life. <laughs> I know it seems weird, but like she was very, very shy and literally quite timid. Um, so maybe it would be good to put down like a timid t to freak out. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, and yeah, let's actually, if I'm going to put something in for the Okapi, do I have like a tropical... Well, we Oh, we have this... Oh... Oh, wait, what the heck? Callisto, for crying out loud! <laughs> Let's go ahead, emergency animal capture, Callisto. She wandered straight out, so I am going to need to add in some better rocks there. I don't know how she got out, but she definitely was trying for it. So it was probably this rock right over here. I probably need a second rock to prevent that from happening again. So we will fix that and we will kind of like patch in the areas that the tortoises might wander away from. And if she wandered through here, we can put in a fence. Oh gosh. All right. Well, holy moly. Timid, I do want to find a way to celebrate your life. And I feel like I need... There's a broken... Oh, this is really cool. Look at this broken wooden bridge. That would actually be kind of a cool thing as a way to be like, no, no, we need privacy, you see. Hmm. Would that be kind of a cool decorative thing to have somewhere? I mean, kind of. I like it because maybe Timid is, was, her legacy will be like, nobody mess with me. <laughs> Leave me alone. And... That's actually really cool. We'll put this down and we'll remove these rocks. There we go. And maybe we'll say that this was a... Uh... Oh no, there's litter everywhere over here. What the heck is happening? Oh my gosh. But we can say that this broken bridge is like Timid's torment or like Timid's triumph. Timid's triumph because she managed to like get a little bit of privacy in this place which was really hard to pull off at the time. Uh, so I can't name it because it's not a group object but we know that this is going to be Timid's triumph right here where she was able to give herself a little bit of privacy. Thank you very much. Uh, and this is terrible. I have no idea why the litter is so bad. So let's actually grab one of our staff members. Multiple animals are hungry. Who is in charge? Birdwatcher Harpy is in charge of this area. Birdwatcher Harpy, you should not be wandering. We have a crisis of trash over here. There we go. There, and Birdwatcher Harpy should get in here and clean this up. But I actually love this being Timid's Triumph. A little fallen area that we've got. And then let's check who is mature, or who is hungry. Call keepers. The keeper should hopefully be feeding all the animals in here pretty soon. I think we have too many flamingos again. So we'll need to work on that. Alright. 
And then Alejandro is going to finally grow up. So we'll release him pretty soon. Um, some of the other animals are stressed. They will get over it eventually. Queen Blush, honestly. Honestly. All right, phew. Well, that was a busy like start, but let's go ahead and check on our Okapi because I do think that one of them is currently pregnant. Bashful. Oh no, Bashful's not pregnant. Or is she pregnant? I think she's, oh, she's not pregnant. All right, Bashful. I think I managed to prevent you from getting pregnant. <gasps> the wolves have had babies. Jeez, I haven't even had time to show you guys the stuff we've been doing. I could swear that one of our Okapi is pregnant. Maybe it's this one. We'll move her in and check on her. And Alia the Timberwolf just had babies! You guys, look at the little ones! <gasps> Sonti happens to be... Oh, Sonti, you're gonna be Rhea the second. Oh, Thea! Actually, Thea is a really cool name. We'll name her Thea. Uh, and then we also have three puppies! Yes! We have Thea. And then we'll go ahead and we'll have Mars the second after her grandfather. And we've got, oh, little girl, oh, Emberlin. Oh, we're going to name her Ember because that's just beautiful. And thanks for that, parent, just, you know, pooping and kind of ruining the scene. But we have some puppies. Animals are starving. What the heck, a doodle? Thad, why are you starving when there's food right here? I'm quite perplexed. He's like 66. Maybe he just can't figure it out anymore. Uh, meanwhile, Aladad is stressed. Maybe people are being noisy. Oh, geez. There is like something going down right now. This is, this is, what on earth is happening? So many of our flamingos. This guy actually we can release to the wild because he doesn't have the gold jeans we're looking for. All right, guys, it is flamingo roundup time because they are like being literally bird brained. So let's dive in. Sparrow, honey, and queen cherry all need to move over here to where there's food. And then your sua over here. We might have to release a bunch of these guys, because I don't know how many of them are actually Gold Star. She also- she can also be released to the wild because she too doesn't happen to have the food she needs. Farhan, there's literally food over here that he apparently has just decided to veto. And then Malika can also be released to the wild because she is not a Golden Flamingo. Alright, are you guys eating? The food is right here. It has got quite a bit inside of it that you could be eating right now. Fayad, I know you're old, but like there's food. Oh, there we go. Okay. He ate it somehow. Phew. Okay. That's better. We just have Adele here who is stressed, but also not a gold flamingo. So release to the wild. There we go. We'll get the flamingo thing sorted eventually. And it's sunny, so I can get you guys down here and introduce you to the new mountain range. <gasps> That's how we can memorialize Timid, maybe. With some of these mountains. I'm going to do it. I'm going to name this Timid's Triumph. And then, oops, Timid's Triumph. Try. I think that's right. <laughs> and then we're actually going to remember on with uh ons let's see the on mountain there we go timid's triumph mountain and on mountain and we'll kind of pick some of the really memorable uh like little animals that we have had in the zoo and name them after the new mountain range we're building. But I did go ahead and add in a few more of the mountains that we have been working with because they're really fantastic for separating the zoo and starting to make some distinctive areas. Over here we have got- an animal has escaped again. Calipe! <laughs> oh that's so funny that it's her again. Let's go ahead and put in a guest gate. So we need guest gate. How do these work? I think at the entrance sort of spot. Obstructed. Alright, we'll wait till she's put away 
<laughs> and then we'll come in with the pathing and we'll try to put it in the guest gate so that she'll stop escaping because that is really funny. Oh my goodness. Oh, hobby Uh, All right, let's see. Oh, the yellow anacondas had babies. What the heck? Guava, good job. I didn't expect that. We'll grab all of them, put them in the trade center. I love how busy we're like constantly kept here. And George and Leticia will become the new lychee and guava because they are gold level anacondas. What do you guys think about that? Meanwhile, we'll select all these. We have some giant centipedes and a couple anacondas to bring in $8,000. What? Guava the second. And then we've also got lychee the second. There we go. At the tropical fruit orchard. An acorn has our flamingo is passing away of old age. Oh, jeez. Why do I? It's been a hard day losing some of our older animals. Acorn, I will remember you with a lovely cherry blossom garden that we'll go ahead and put in right over here. Actually perfect for what we needed. And I love putting in like the memorial garden so that we can kind of reflect on how our zoo has grown and see the animals who helped make all of this possible. So acorn, flamingo, tree. There we go. I know we haven't been adding in the pangolin pavilion uh, little memorial spots when the pangolins pass away, but to be fair, we really need to take care of having them not inbreed anymore. Phew, but all right guys. So we have some new mountains. I added in a mountain over on this side down here as well to block off the kind of like Asian section of the zoo that we're doing from the temperate forest side. And then I added in another mountain over here to make it so that the temperate forest has a little bit more clear distinction from the research jungle zone. The research jungle zone I'm very excited about because we're going to come on in and there are so many caves. We're going to start filling up these caves with exhibit areas and shops, little hidden pathways that some of the guests can walk through. So we'll remove like these rocks right here. Oh, I'm so excited about this part. So we can kind of like move these pieces out of the way. And then we're going to make it so the guests can win. But I'm also biased because as you guys know, when I taught uh, like ecology, it was cave science ecology. So I got to teach cave science to people. So I am a little biased about it. Uh, so we've put a couple exhibits in here, a shop or two, people can walk back out. And then I want to put in a lemur exhibit, a red ruffed lemur exhibit, maybe with a tapir or a Galapagos tortoise or two, because we kind of need to disperse the tortoises until they age up. And what we're going to do then is make a path that people can walk past this waterfall, walk over a little bridge to kind of get like an up top view of the lemur area and then come back down over here. So I'm really excited about that. We need to add in some modern shops. Oops, animals will fight due to overcrowding. Yes, we need to send that baby bongo who just grew up out. Let's see. Yes, and I knew that the... Oh, I hear them fighting already. Okay, quickly. We need this guy. Wumba. He has no immunity, oh dear. And he's pouting because he lost the fight. So we released him. Oh, that wasn't Wamba. That was Persimmon right over here. And Timber still rules the roost. Gotcha. And we do have... Here we go. This is Nigzoya. I'm actually going to name her Timid the Second. Or actually, I'm going to name her... Um, she's very stubborn. So I'm going to name her... Resistance! Which is a really interesting name for an Okapi, but she's extremely stubborn. That's why she's pregnant with her dad's baby, unfortunately. All right. And then animals will fight due to overcrowding. The Okapi? I don't think that that should be the case. Oh, the bongo. Oh. 
Maybe it's time to take some of the females, Persimmon and Fig, and put them in the Trade Center. Because those two are actually daughters. Gosh darn it! Callisto, not you two! <laughs> Alright, let's call a vet. This is a very slow-moving disaster, after all. And while we're here, <laughs> let's get a, a barrier put in. We need a guest gate. And I think we need to wait until the guests are at the path. Callisto's just walking back in on her own. <laughs> Callisto, okay, she's back in on her own and we'll pick her up. Let's move her ourselves, guys. <laughs> Calipe, Callisto, you two are just being such geese right now. And then let's come in and remove this. And put in guest gate right here. Oh, it's perfect. I love it. And just make sure that the path is connected. Like that. And connect it on the other side. This is my very first guest gate. How does it work? Ta-da! Oh, I love it. I can't believe they were just walking out the front over and over and over again. That was so cute. It was just so freaking cute. And Talia's about to have babies. Oh, I haven't even given you guys a tour of the tortoise breeding center yet. I am so pumped and excited. I was feeling really frustrated for a long time with where our zoo was going because it was so messy. But all we needed to do was hire some experts for some of the builds with blueprints, aka get them off the workshop, and then just keep showing up. Like consistency has changed my life more than any amount of like being viral at something or being really really good that one day so be consistent at the things you want to change your life about guys and you never know what may happen but all right let's see what the babies do and i don't have do i have my name list pulled up somewhere oh i don't have my name list pulled up somewhere but i will make a name list out of your guys comments you can give comments for babies across any of the animals of the zoo or i might just name some of the animals after you guys which will be really fun because we've got a lot of babies incoming especially with the red ruffed lemurs i want to add ah <sighs> but all right we're on tortoise baby hatching baby watch so i'm gonna have a sip of tea while we wait The wait was not long! The wait was not long at all! Two! I see two! Oh my goodness! We have Dolores and Fernando! And they're both actually silver quality animals. Uh, hopefully they will do quite well for themselves. Hello, you two! They're really, really happy with life, except for the food enrichment, which all of our tortoises are like, hey, improve the food enrichment. And here comes our zookeeper, walking in to tidy things up, make sure that everything looks nice, and two new baby Galapagos tortoises, which I'm sure you guys know are not as many baby tortoises. I'm gonna have to look up the exact number, but that's not as many as they normally have. <laughs> Normally, there's a lot more. Let's see. The number of offspring per mating event in Planet Zoo is two to seven, but the number of offspring in real life, I'm curious, so let's let's follow the babies while I look this up. Number of offspring, Galapagos tortoise, uh, egg clutch, that's what you call a group of eggs that a reptile lays, is the clutch size. Hmm. And let's see, clutch. So the egg clutch is only 16? No wonder they ended up becoming like very endangered, especially after people ate them and rode them around like donkeys. It's only 16. I thought it was gonna be a lot higher than that, but the average egg clutch for the Galapagos tortoise is 16. What the heck? I am so spoiled by sea turtles who will just like dump a whole pile of eggs in there. So that was very illuminating. But all right, guys, I'm in love with our zoo as usual, and I can't wait to continue expanding it with red ruffed lemurs, with getting in some modern research areas, hidden cave exhibits, and continuing to take care of the old parts of the zoo. 
that we are constantly seeking to update and make better. Uh, and I have a goal of starting up doing some special festivals to transform the zoo, like the Cherry Blossom Festival, pretty soon. And I also have another goal of trying to make it so Zudesia Zoo has at least one of every species available. That's going to take a long time to get to, but it's on my list. So, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm so sorry about the trauma with the Okapi to start the day. That was hard, but we have little baby tortoises to help out at least. They're somewhere. I lost the moving boulders again. <laughs> and if you guys would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.